Hey guys, what's going on? It's Clever Tiki, and in this video, we're gonna learn about REST API, which stands for Representational State Transfer Application Programming Interface. Okay, so let's first look at the representational state transfer. Now, some of the simple questions that might come up when you're first starting to understand the REST API is what is being represented exactly? What is a state and what's being transferred? Okay, so let's look at all these words individually and I hope I can explain what they all mean. Okay, so the word representational means there is a transfer of representations of resources and the resources can be pretty much anything that can be named on the internet like user, a list of users, a photo or a list of photos, comments, posts, articles, page, video, book, profile, etc. To understand how exactly we get a representation of resources, let's look at how everyone interacts with web pages via client server model and the HTTP protocol. And we're going to get back to this chart at the end of the video, and I'm going to explain what all this is at the end. Okay, so here's the HTTP protocol. Okay, you guys should be familiar with a HTTP protocol. Every time you type a URL in a browser, you're sending a request to the web server and the web server responds with a resource. So what's important to understand here is every time you type a URL in a browser or click on a web page link, you're sending a request for a specific resource or resources from a web server and the web server responds and delivers the requested resource to your browser as in a form of web page or whatever format that the resource is in. Now the second important point to understand is that web server doesn't actually de deliver the resource. It doesn't actually send you the database that it has, but rather a representation of that resource in a format that is readable, for example, HTML or image. So think of actual resource as physical things located on a web server database or stored in a web, in a web server hard drive and representations of those resources as copies in either readable format for human being like HTML or image, or easy to work with format for programmers like JSON, XML, and other formats. It's also helpful to think of the whole web as a bunch of resources. Remember that we always request a resource when clicking on a link or typing a URL. No wonder that the URL stands for uniform resource locator. So let's take a closer look at the URL now. Okay, so if we go to this URL, or actually, here you can see that the protocol is HTTPS, which is just a secure HTTP protocol, followed by the host name, which is clevertechie.com. And then we have a path to the resource along with its name. So let's go ahead and type in this URL into the browser clevertechie.com forward slash img flowers lily.jpg and here we are presented with a representation of the resource in an image format and if I check the headers here on the response headers I can see that the content type is in fact an image so that's a representation of the lily.jpg resource in an image format now I've also created a HTML page and if I go to lily.html this resource is now presented in an HTML format. And if I check the headers, in fact, under content type response headers, you can see that the content type is in fact text slash HTML. And we have uh, some other information about the resource like title, gorgeous lily flower. So that's the representation of the resources and the server responds with a representation of resource in whatever format that resource is in. And that's what the URL is for. It's a uniform resource locator. And every time you click on a link or, uh, or enter the URL in the browser, you get resources. Now, now that we've understand what the word representational means, let's look at the word state. So to continue from the clever Techie example, think of clever Techie as one big application. So when you land on a clever Techie website, 
this is one state of the application. You get a bunch of links to other pages and and you have a logo and categories presented. So that's one state of the application. Whenever I click on a link, for example here, the application state changes and now we're presented with another resource which is a page with all the other content of that resource. And as we click through all these different pages, the application cha uh, state keep changing. The application state keep changes to one state to the next, and uh, that is what the state means in the representational state transfer. Now, the transfer when the resource gets transferred from the web server, if we look at the URL again, when the resource gets transferred, so we send a request for the resource and we get a representation back in whatever format resource is presented. This is what is meant by the word transfer. However, it can also refer to the transfer of the application state when we click on the next link and get transferred to another page. So at this point, we're ready to understand the whole REST architecture and this is what the whole thing looks like. Okay, notice that I've added the verb plus URL and under verb we have get, post, put and delete. Now we of course, we don't have to type those verbs in a web browser when we're requesting a resource. Those are just actions that describe what what kind or what type of HTTP request we're sending to the web server. Okay, so the most common one is get. So whenever I go to and type clevertechie.com, if I check the headers on top here, you can see that the, that the verb is in fact get. And every time I click on a page, that's a get uh, request. Now, um, and, and that's the most common one. Whenever you click on a link, it's usually you're sending a get request. Now the post, on the other hand, is used when, when you submit some kind of information, when you send a tweet out, when you log in with user and password, or when you subscribe to a newsletter. And as you can see here on the left side, I have a newsletter subscription. And let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and test this out right now. I'm going to enter my name and email and click send it to me now. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to be redirected to this welcome page. And now if I check the headers, you can see that the method is post because we have posted information and that's the method that was that was used by the application. Okay, so that's get and post and the HTTP verbs. Now, um, now that we understand how the REST works, let's look at the REST API. Okay, so as you can see here, the REST API is made up of a REST API endpoint URL. This is where the actual URL is located, the API URL is located. Then we follow that by the method and parameters. So the think of the, of the API, it stands for the application programming interface, but you can think of it as a bunch of useful methods or functions. And the parameters are the parameters that we can pass on to these methods, just like in a programming language, to get what we want out of it. So in this example, you can see uh, I'm using a flickr.com API, which is a image gallery site. I'm using their method to get information about a specific photo named flickr.photos.getinfo. And for the parameter, I'm using photo underscore ID and I'm specifying the ID of the photo. And the server is going to send back a response, which is going to be the representation of the resource in all the available formats. Now, <clears throat> when we're using REST API, it's important to remember that we're not going to be getting HTML as a response because that's not going to be very uh, useful in a programming uh, w whenever we're writing our own programming application. And these are the most common formats that we're going to be uh, seeing the representation of the resource whenever sending a REST API request. Okay, so that's how the REST API works. Now let's actually look at Let's let, let me uh, show you an example of the REST API request. So if I go to flickr.com services API, this is their API documentation. And if I scroll down here under request formats, you can see REST. And they give you the endpoint URL and how to actually send the request. 
they also have a bunch of functions or API methods on the right hand side. But to make things easier, I'm actually going to go to a cool site called apig.com forward slash console. And this is a website that already lists a bunch of available APIs. Uh, if you check this checkbox here or scroll box, I'm going to go ahead and uh, under API, I'm going to check, I'm going to select Flickr. And under the API methods, it's going to list all the of their methods, just like listed in their documentation. And under photos, I'm going to find the one to search for a bunch of photos, which is flickr.photos.search. So that's the method. And you can see that it added the endpoint URL along with the method. Now let's specify some parameters or arguments. As you can see, the API key is required, and this is so that they can track how many requests we're making to their API so that we don't spam it to death. So usually you have to sign up for the account, but I already signed up and I'm gonna use my API key here. And you guys feel free to use this API if you feel like typing it. Otherwise, sign up with Flickr uh, Yahoo account because Yahoo is the one that owns Flickr. So that's going to be one of our parameters. As you can see, it added this parameter here in the URL. Finally, uh, actually for the format, I'm going to input JSON, which is the format that we're going to be getting the response in. And uh, for the text, I'm going to enter Lily to keep the Valentine's flower theme going here. And finally, don't forget to change this HTTP to HTTPS, otherwise it's not going to work because it's supposed to be secure. And then click send. Now we got the response back with HTTP 200 OK code, which means everything went well. And if you scroll down, it's going to have a bunch of this uh, JSON code, which goes on what seems like forever. But if you triple click on it and copy, then you can open up the notepad and you can paste the whole thing in a notepad. So what we get here is a bunch of results with information about the photos, about Lily photos that we just searched for. And the reason it's in this strange looking format is because this makes it a lot easier to implement in our applications as we're going to be programming and using this API. And that's what the REST API is for. It's for implementing into the applications. But if you guys want to understand what's going on here a little bit more, you can actually paste this inside of a online JSON parser. So if you go to json.parser.online.fr, you can paste this code here and uh, get rid of the, the uh, closing code a bracket here and just get rid of uh, this part as well. So just delete that. And now we get presented uh, with the JSON, which is a lot easier for us to read. So this is just a way to understand all the gibberish <laughs> presented by the uh, JSON response a little bit better. And you can see that we have information about the photos. We have a photo ID, we have an owner ID, we have a secret key as well as the title of the photo. So we can uh, use this code to plug it into, into our application and start working with it. So that's how we make a GET REST API request. Now let me show you how to make a tweet. So if you select uh, Twitter under the APIs here, it's going to change to the Twitter API. And of course, whenever we send a tweet out via post method, it's going to require authentication. So under authentication, I'm going to select oh, uh, the first one and then sign in with Twitter. I'm going to authorize the app. And it has logged into my Twitter account. Now I'm going to select under tweets. I'm going to select the statuses update.json which is the method used to post tweets. And then I'm going to say happy Valentine's Day under the status. And I think that's pretty much all you need. Click send. 
HTTP 200. Okay, that means the tweet has been sent. Let's go to twitter.com to see if that worked. And I'm gonna click on my home homepage link. Um, let's see, I'm gonna click on my, and there you go. Happy Valentine's Day. The tweet has been sent successfully using the REST API. So that's pretty much it for the REST API. I hope you guys found this uh, video useful. And if you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Clever Techie out.